Topping today's news, amendments made to the National Intelligence Agency Act. The works minister gives an update on shantytown demolitions. The Bahamas Constitution Party reacts to the prime minister's dismissal of their Supreme Court injunction to halt the BPL deal. And members of parliament remember their fallen comrade, Obi Wilshkum. <laughs> I'm Jarino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It is a pleasure to have you join us. The Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, moved a bill to amend the National Crime Intelligence Agency Act passed in 2019. Mr. Monroe said the Davis administration has breathed new life into the intelligence agency, which is an important arm of national security. He explained what changes the amendments will bring. And it's simply this. It's to change the name of the organization from National Crime Intelligence Agency to National Intelligence Agency. I'll shortly explain the reason for that. The next step, Madam Speaker, one will find, is to introduce a National Intelligence Agency Commission to deal with employee matters and complaints. And I will have a look at how we propose to do that. Another change, Madam Speaker, is basically to give details of the different job titles in the agency as we have seen fit to develop it so that there is a career path, a structure to persons entering this service. While the opposition supported the amendments, party leader Michael Pintard accused Prime Minister Davis and his administration for being hypocritical. He says they opposed the very same bill by the Minnis administration in 2019 when Mr. Davis described the bill as being dangerous and unconstitutional. The bill today, my, uh, Madam Speaker, is in a large measure the same bill. With the adjustments, and there are few, mentioned one is the formation of the commission which we think in a bill like this it is useful to have a, an agency that actually addresses the issue of how people are hired uh, what positions are, are hired and to address hr related uh matters that's important the removal of the the term crime which was inserted by the free national movement again to distinguish it from the 2017 bill that has now been removed and we understand the change in nomenclature or label is designed to point to how wide the bill is and ought to address a range of issues uh, uh, uh madam speaker so we, we we understand that but here's what's interesting madam speaker the member for Freetown says there should be no opposition, there should be no issue. This is a non-controversial issue. Michael said there should be a bipartisan approach to this issue. But let me remind the public, the members of the government today, when they were in the opposition, they opposed the very bill they have now brought today. The National Security Minister said when the Davis administration came to power, the intelligence agency had no real structure, but now has a building of its own with its own vehicles and proper training. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Philip Davis said amendments to the bill will ensure the intelligence agency can run properly and efficiently. Over the years, shanty towns have been an ongoing concern with the unregulated communities popping up across the Bahamas from here in the capital to Abaco, Eleuthera, and Andros. Although the Ministry of Works and Family Island Affairs curated a task force to remove the unregulated communities with hundreds of eviction notices issued, some of those makeshift homes remain untouched. Clay Sweeting, the Minister of Works, told reporters today why this may be the case. What we do is we provide them with the notice, 28 day notice, which is according to legislation of the Building Control Act, and then after which is when we demolish. Um, I mean, it takes a lot of uh, time, effort, and also team management to ensure that social services, all the min ministries collaborate to ensure it's done efficiently, effectively, uh, because you also have persons in these structures that you also have to take into account um, whether the, the, the Bahamian. They have permanent residence, all of that. So, so social services plays a role, Ministry of Health plays a role, Defense Force, Police Force, Ministry of Works. So um, the collaboration to make sure, but um, 
we have, we have provide them with their notices um, and, and they should be aware that any time after that 28 days, uh, the Shanty Town Task Force should go in and monitor. Minister Sweeting says no one is above the law and explains that regardless of the nationality, anyone residing in unregulated communities is breaking the law. Um, you look at the ministry has been shown a no-nonsense approach to unregulated communities. So if the Shantytown and Unregulated Task Force uh, puts these notices on these structures, who can guarantee you that they will be demolished. So I would advise persons, once if the notice is placed, to uh, get their belongings, if they need assistance from social services, if they're permanent residents or citizens, um, to contact uh, the ministry to assist in any way. Um, but, you know, we have to look at integration. Uh, we have to look at ensuring that persons who are a part of our society, they are Bahamians, if they are permit, rest, if they are permit holders, that they are a part of who we are as a country, who we are as Bahamian, and that nobody is a... Minister Sweeting says the ongoing process of demolishing shanty towns and discouraging others from building them is not only a Ministry of Works effort, but a community effort. Prime Minister Philip Davis comments on not being served any documents regarding the emergency injunction filed in the Supreme Court by the Bahamas Constitution Party concerning the deal between Bahamas Power and Light and Pike Corporation, Bahamas Grid, has prompted the BCP leader Ali McIntosh to respond with great disappointment in an exclusive interview with Love 97 JCN. She accused the Prime Minister of misleading the nation. What the concern of the, the BCP is, and my concern intently, is that the Prime Minister said in his briefing that he is not concerned about the BCP Supreme Court action regarding the BPL deal, and has denied that the office of the Prime Minister or the Attorney General has seen such or been served such document, which he knows to be untrue. Uh, what is interesting is the Prime Minister also added that the government intends to meet any of the BCP objectives in the court, which means they have seen the notice of application, the affidavit, and the certificate of urgency filed officially on August 13th, served electronically on August 27th. McIntosh says the Prime Minister's rush to table the documents and details of the BPL deal in Parliament after the Pike Bahamas grid have already begun to carry out works here in the Bahamas proves that the deal is illegitimate. Obviously, the, the, at the service, the, the, the special purpose vehicle was formed and were given, 60% of it was given to Island Grid. So we are aware that the implementation of the deal was done. But the BCP concern is, is it legitimate? And the fact that the Prime Minister is telling us now that they are preparing to put this before the Parliament of the Bahamas means the bill could not be legitimate if it has not been legally authorized by the Parliament of the Bahamas. That's our basic thrust. If it's, the deal is not legal, then everything that is done prior to now has been illegitimate. Ending her statement, McIntosh says the Davis administration has dismissed all opportunities to legitimize the BPL deal and has largely left the Bahamian people and employees at BPL out of the loop. She says they will continue with their actions to halt the deal until Bahamian people or, or until the Bahamian people know exactly what that deal contains. And finally, in this segment, the Bahamas has consistently carried out measures to stop the difficult and troubling crime of human trafficking. Unfortunately, the Bahamas continues to be a stopover location for criminals trying to smuggle people mainly into the United States or having the Bahamas as their final destination. Beginning this evening, the Bahamas National Neighborhood Watch Council is putting on a two-day workshop on human trafficking. The aim is to stop human trafficking and bring awareness as to who and what makes someone vulnerable to the crime. The two-day event runs from 6 to 8 p.m. each night at the police headquarters on East Street. You're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.